Hey guys, it's Wednesday, May 21st, uh, 12.45 p.m. Um, wanted to do my one month on tea update. I uh, had my injection this morning and um, it will be the last time that someone else does my injection for me. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to start doing my own next week. So um, I have a whole list of stuff to talk about and my challenge is going to be to pack it all in in under 10 minutes. So thankfully Nick just posted a video today that was 20 minutes long. So even if I have to do two parts, um, I feel like he has set the bar so um, high or maybe it's low. I don't know, however you look at it, that two part videos are cool. Um, and I think I can get everything in under 20 minutes. We'll see. Okay, so um, some things that I noticed um, the last three or four days and it also happened the last time right before my shot is that I can't sleep. Um, I just am awake and um, I thought that maybe it was stress because of finals or you know the end of the semester from a couple of weeks ago but it happened again the last couple of nights and so I don't know if anyone else experiences that or what that's about. Um, excuse me. It's not like being anxious about getting my shot. It's like my body just is not working the way it should and I can't go to sleep. Um, well, I can go to sleep, but then I wake up and I can't fall back asleep. So I was awake this morning from like 2.30 to 4.30, 5 o'clock. Um, so that's kind of frustrating. Um, changes. Um, I feel thicker. <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to, for the sake of my sanity, um, chalk that up to the testosterone. Because prior to testosterone, if somebody told me that I looked thicker, uh, that would not have gone over well. Probably would have made me feel not so hot. So my partner said that I looked thicker, and I said, like, fatter thicker? And she said, no, just, like, thicker that when she touches me, like, there's just a thickness. So um, otherwise, no changes. Um, However, I do want to kind of talk around this this one change, this issue. And I've heard a couple of other guys say like, oh, some changes, but I don't really want to talk about it on YouTube. And I'm not going to specifically talk about one of the most noticeable right away sorts of changes that um, my body experienced. But um, I think I mentioned in one of my videos that I'm a cyclist. I bike everywhere. Um, yeah. Um, that's a whole different sort of an experience and I find myself riding with my hands up off the bars to take some pressure off because it's intense. It's intense. And uh, I am certain that all of you who are on T totally know what I'm talking about. And those of you that are not on T, you might still know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, that's all I'm going to talk. That's all I'm going to say around that. Um, I look forward to being able to ride my bike um, and not have it be such an experience. We'll leave it at that. Um, okay, so that's kind of the, the tea update. That's what's going on. Um, other things, my laundry list of other things to talk about. So my friend who works in the psychological and counseling center, the one who hooked me up with my doctor here, um, I something on my teeth, sorry. Um, she asked me to come and speak to her interns. They're graduating. Three of them are MFTs and one is um, going to be an LCSW. So they're all future therapists. And so she asked me to come talk to them about um, trans issues and, and working with trans clients and, and just like the whole thing. And it was so cool. Um, I've been doing public speaking and public education around particularly like queer issues, specifically like lesbian and gay issues since like 1995 presenting at conferences and I do trainings for like our local domestic violence shelter and and into the university and into the community college here and different stuff but this is the first time that I got to go in and speak with a group of people specifically about trans issues and um, it is just like I come alive I so love doing that um, I it's like I just get I just get so I get so empowered by it and being able to talk to people and give them information and giving them an opportunity to ask questions that they probably wouldn't be able to ask people. Um, I don't know. So it was, it was really, really cool. And um, I found, I found my voice. I found myself in that moment. And, and I always do when I do presentations or, or public speaking stuff. My chihuahua is having some allergy issues. So 
And I always have to do this. So I'm just going to really quick, I'm going to go so that you all can see how cute that is. Well, not that. That's not very cute. Bug. Okay. I'm already at five and a half minutes. Holy shit. All right, talking fast. So that was really, really cool. Um, the other thing that happened is um, I work with kids, talked about that numerous times. Um, I haven't told any of the kids that I was transitioning. So um, on Tuesday, we were doing an activity called the Power Shuffle, and I normally participate in the activity, but I didn't this time because the very first question in the Power Shuffle is everyone stands in a line, and, and if something applies to you, you cross the other line, and it's completely silent, and you just... There's a whole purpose to it, which I could get into, but now I'm freaking out about time. So if you're interested in knowing more about that, send me a message and I'll tell you more about it. Um, but the point is, is the very first question is, if you are a female, please cross the other side of the room. And I knew that I wouldn't cross, and I knew that if I participated and I didn't cross, that would get some attention. And so I chose to not participate, and when we were debriefing, one of the kids asked me why I didn't participate. So I felt like that was an opportunity, and so I told them that I don't identify as female, and I know that they have always seen me and understood me as female, but I have a male identity and I'm transitioning, and that I chose to not participate because I didn't want to take away from the experience that they were going to have, and the attention didn't need to be on me as a facilitator. And they were all cool, no big deal, and um, that was the extent of the entire conversation. But it was cool because I got to tell the kids of that particular group. Um, had support group last night, my eating disorder support group. Um, as I made a video last week, I, I told them that I was trans and, and everything and everyone was super cool. And it was like a time warp last night because they knew, yet I was still getting sheed. And um, when it's time for group to be over, they're like, okay, ladies. And I wasn't pissy about it. It was like, um, I almost chuckled about, like I was like, okay, I, I told them, right? Like, I didn't dream that up. I didn't, you know, I'm not in a time warp where I went back a couple of weeks I think it's just they have to get used to it, and, and I think that's hard. And and nay, um, pronouns are habitual sorts of things, and we just generally don't think about them. But that was interesting to me. Um, okay, so Nick, moving to San Francisco. Um, I loved your video. I made a comment about um, wanting to screen. I'm, I'm a fucking transsexual. I just saw that image on a shirt. I don't know. Uh, maybe we could do that and, and market it and make lots of money for people who need to have a shirt that says I'm a fucking transsexual. <laughs> Um, but, um, I would totally love hooking up with you and I don't know if you're going to pride and going to the trans march and stuff, but my partner and I, um, would totally be into that. I'm speaking on her behalf. She hasn't told me that, but I know that she wants to get connected to other lesbian identified partners of trans guys. So there's an absence of that in her life. And I don't know if your partner is still lesbian identified or actually ever was lesbian identified, but nonetheless, um, I live about three and a half hours North of San Francisco. So, um, so to answer that question, to clarify that, um, so for any of you out there that are keeping track, I know that there's so many of you who are keeping track and counting down the days, but I'm going to tell you anyways, my surgery is less than two weeks away. Um, it was two weeks yesterday, so I mean like 13 days, but I don't really count today, so I'm counting 12 days. So effing awesome. Super stoked because I mentioned that it's a little warm around here, a little toasty at 111 degrees, and... Um, I'm not enjoying my binder. Not enjoying my binder. So, and my last thing, and I have no idea what time I'm at, but my very last thing is that um, I've mentioned also that I'm quitting my job, and my last day of work is next Friday, the 30th. I think that's what it is, and I'm so excited about that. Um, I'm gonna have a lot of downtime this summer, so look out, people. There might be um, a lot of videos. Sorry about that, but I do something with my time. Um, thanks again for all the subscriptions, all the comments. Uh, I am digging this YouTube community. It, it just, it's, it's amazing and it's wonderful. And there's a lot of people who um, I interact with in my real life um, who are watching my videos and subscribing and uh, that's awesome. A little vulnerable. Did I tell a story about the guy who came up to me at the gym? Someone came up to me at the gym, gym and was like, I recognize you from your YouTube videos. <laughs> that was a little awkward. Um, but I don't have time to tell that story. So, got to go. Later.